entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Dr. Amanda, and you're in the right place if you're a growth-minded entrepreneur who's ready to align your energy, mindset, and business growth habits to experience rapid scaling of your business. (laughs) I say rapid scaling. I love this new playing with the term rapid because when you get aligned in your energy mindset and business growth habits, you will experience an acceleration of outer world attraction. So your outer world is a reflection of your inner world. So if you want to experience rapid business growth, you've got to align yourself from within your energy, your mindset, and your business growth habits. And then you start to see outer world success rapidly. It's pretty incredible what you can create in your business fast. I went from food stamps to six figures in my first year of business. And I since I'm in my fifth year and now we have a top 2% podcast. I went from having broken down relationships to being happily married. I have a really awesome community here through the inner power family. Um, I mean, so many good things have happened and it's just because I decided to align my energy, my mindset, and my business growth habits. And that's why I love to teach on this podcast things that are going to help you experience that rapid growth by aligning your inner power so that you can get what you want. So that's what this podcast is all about. And today we're focusing on four questions to clarify your client journey for optimal business growth. Now, the reason I wanted to focus on this is because I'm realizing that strategy and systems are incredibly important for everything you do in your business. And if you don't have a client journey system or roadmap that you follow, you're going to struggle to accelerate business growth because you are taking a very scattered approach to what you do. And so it's important to define your client journey And for those of you who don't even know what I'm talking about, you probably do, but let's define what the client journey is so that you're really clear. And you're definitely going to want to take some notes today if you're running or cleaning the dishes or (laughs) driving your car, just come back and take some notes. Uh, This will be outlined in the show notes as well. So client journey, simplest way to think about client journey is that you are thinking about who you help, what you do to help them how you attract them, and what your scaling systems are. And that's what we're going to break down in this episode today. One other thing I want to mention is that if you have not yet listened to season four, episode seven, it's called the four zones of business scaling that lead to your zone of manifestation success. You're going to want to go back and listen to that episode. So just season four, episode seven, and you're going to want to identify where you're at on that roadmap. This covers four zones that you are going to go Go through as you build your business. And we're really talking about getting systematized in today's episode so that you can get to zone four, which is your zone of manifestation. And so it's helpful to identify where you're at on the roadmap and then go, okay, what are the next systems and steps I need to take in order to keep moving forward? When you clarify your client journey, it helps you go from zone two to three or even one to two, two to three. And you'll see what I'm talking about when you listen to that episode. So let's break this down. Four questions to help you clarify your client journey. Okay, so number one, who is your five-star customer? And I really want you to dig in here. I want you to be thinking about who are the people that you absolutely love to work with. They're the ones that you get up in the morning and you go, oh yeah, this person's on my client list. I can't wait to get to work with them. They are, if I could clone them and every single client or customer could be just like them, this is the person who's your five-star customer. And when you're working with that person, you want to really be taking note of how they think, how they feel, what their pain points are, what they read, what they listen to. Uh, You're talking about the psychographics. So obviously you're going to want to know the demographics. Do you work with men or women or both, all gender? Do you work with certain religion background, religious background? Do you work with a certain political affiliation? Do those things matter? Do they not? Do you work with a certain age group? 
Do you work with people in a certain region or climate or, and there's so many different ways to niche down and identify your five-star customer. So those would be demographic things. In the psychographic elements, you wanna be thinking about how they think and feel. And the reason you wanna tap into this is because when you can read your five-star customer's mind, they feel understood, they feel seen, they feel heard, and when they read your content or watch your content, listen to your content, they're gonna be thinking, wow, you really know me. So I get this statement all the time from people, they'll say, how are you reading my mind? And it's because I know my five-star customer inside and out. Every time I'm on a coaching call, I'm taking notes. When I'm doing group coaching, I take notes. When I'm in my master classes, I'm taking notes about what my people say. I have a spreadsheet built where it's actually on Evernote. I love Evernote. So I use Evernote to track, you know, very specific, very specific things that my clients are saying. And so I can go back to that when I'm going to create a product or a program. And I've already been doing the market research as I go. And then I just pull those statements statements straight into what I'm creating. This helps my people know that I know them. This really helps when you're on a consult or a sales call with somebody because they will feel like you can read their mind. And the reason that this is easy to do as you grow is because the more you pay attention to it, the more you're going to hear patterns and overlaps of what people are saying and thinking. And that's how you really know you've nailed your niche because you will start to see a pattern in who you're attracting and you'll start to be able to really identify with them easily and know exactly what they're, who they are, right? And so questions here when you're identifying who is your five-star customers, you wanna be thinking about all of those things I said, like what are they worried about? What keeps them up at night? What, how many, or do they have a family and what do they think about their family? Why do they wanna be in business or whatever it is your area of expertise is? Why do they want your services? Um, what is it that is causing them to seek a solution? Um, what do they read? What kind of groups do they hang out in, in person or online? All of those things, the more that you can dig into that, the better you're going to be able to understand them, which means that all of your marketing and programs and products and services that you put out there are going to be more aligned and magnetic. And that's what we want. Client journey is all about customer attraction. When you have a defined client journey, you're going to automatically attract new people into your programs, which equals more money and more impact. So that's why this is important. Okay, so that's your five star customer. Number two, what problems do you help them solve? So I want you to journal about this and start doing research on all of these. What problems, and you can just write in your journal, what problems do I help them solve, okay? This is again where you need to know your clients and customers and then you need to also start tracking through getting reviews from your customers and case studies about what problems you've helped them solve. And sometimes this is gonna surprise you. When you're working with people and at the end or in the middle, whenever you choose to get a review, you wanna be asking them that specific question. What results did I help you get or what problems did I help you solve? And that way when they're sharing it, they can get really clear themselves. And a result could be something like building confidence. It could be doubling my income. It could be that you help them feel more aligned. You wanna hear from them what they're saying, the direct results are that they got from working with you. And so that's what you want to be putting in your marketing language. It's what you want to be focusing on in terms of who you're looking for. Remember, in Law of Attraction, whatever you focus on expands. So when you define and, cl define and clarify your customer journey, it's helping you hyper-focus on who you are choosing to attract. Now you're looking for them in the world. You're looking for them when you're on social media. You're looking for them when you're out in the community. You're looking, you're hearing what people are saying and you're going, oh, I can help them. It's like your ears perk up. <laughs> I've had this happen before where I was in a coffee shop. Many times this happens. I'll hear two people talking and they'll start talking about like, say the law of attraction or business growth or online business or you know anything along those lines that I teach and, and work with people on. And it's like, I can be hyper-focused, not noticing anything around me. And then all of a sudden I'll hear people a couple tables away talking about being entrepreneurs. And it's like my ears perk up and I turn their direction and I'm like, whoa. 
And that's how your brain works. It's scanning for what you program it to look for. And so that's why it's important to know your client journey. It's also important because when you're walking people through the process of what you do, you need to have clarity about your client journey. Remember, confusion causes disruption in your sales, right? Confused people don't buy. Interestingly, also confused people don't sell. So if you are confused about your client journey and you don't have it mapped out, you're going to have a hard time holding people through the process and attracting them and then walking them through to the end point and whatever that is for you. So you got to get clarity here. Okay, so what problems do you help them solve? And I want you to get really clear about the main problems you help them solve. Now, obviously right now I'm talking to people who are already in business and already working with people. If you are not yet working with people, that's okay. You can start to get to know your five-star customers by getting on groups, Reddit, um, listening to people. You can start doing market validation research by reaching out to people who you think would be your five-star customers and start asking them questions. And when you're looking for problems to solve, you can start reading articles, going into groups, talking to people, same thing. And you can look for what people are wanting to solve and then create a business around that. So you could do this either actively as you're in business, or you could do it as as you setting your business up And this will help you be successful very quickly because you'll already have a system to walk people through your process. Okay, so number three, how do you attract them? Okay, so how do you attract people into your programs, products, services? And when you're thinking about how do you attract them, you specifically want to be focusing on what systems do I have in place to attract and convert them into loyal paying customers? Do you have a lead gen strategy that works? Which lead gen strategy do you have if you have many? Which one works the best? Which one gets you to the goal of walking them through the process? And here is where, when you're looking at what problems do you help them solve, you wanna be thinking, how do you help them solve it, right? So you need to be going, what's my system of success to help people solve those problems? And when I say, what, and number two, what problems do you help them solve? That's where your product service program creation comes from. You're creating a product program or service directly to solve those problems. And if you're pre-six figures, I highly recommend that you start with one product program or service and you hyper focus on that until you get to six figures and then you can start adding more and I teach all of this in my group coaching program and a lot of this also I cover in um, episode seven so season four episode seven you can go back and listen to that and learn some strategies there as well so so you're thinking how do I attract them to my solution and that solution is based on what problems you help them solve okay So what systems do you have in place to attract them and then convert them into paying customers, which means paying customers into a product program or service. So this map is helping you outline everything in your business. So you want to be thinking about, okay, how am I growing my list? How am I talking to people? How am I getting them on calls? What is my system to convert them? If you have a digital product, do you have a good video sales letter that's getting them to purchase the product? the product that you're selling digitally. If it's not converting, then you have a kink in your system and you're never going to be able to scale. So you need to really identify, are my lead magnets working? And what's the end result I'm expecting? Are they converting into paying clients and customers? And then the next question, number four, is what systems do I have in place to scale? And when you're thinking about scalable systems, you're thinking about how do I nurture my five-star customers along the way so that I can grow my impact and income with a scalable system, okay? And so in this question number four, when I say what systems do I have in place to scale, you're looking at your systems of nurturing clients because their success is your reputation. If they're happy with you providing solutions to their problems, they're going to automatically refer you. That's going to help you get reviews and testimonials, which then is going to attract more people. 
then you're going to be able to pay for ads at some point. I don't want you to do that if you're pre six figures or don't have a good system in place because you're just going to be wasting money. <laughs> Once you do have a system that's working, then you can get do ads and you can hire people to start having more expansive lead gen. You also want to be thinking, do I have a program product or service that is scalable? And what I mean by this is that I see a lot of entrepreneurs, they get to this point where they're over delivering and under charging or they're overworking and get underpaid that's zone three and when you or actually that's zone two uh, when you move into zone three you start to value yourself more which means you've got to revamp your products programs and services to be able to impact more people at a time so the traditional way i think about this is often you're working one to one and then you shift to one to few and then one to many so this would look like one-on-one -on -one coaching and then you move into small group coaching and then at the massive level you would move into digital sales or a group or a very high paying mastermind something where you can impact more people at a time and then start generating passive streams of income on top of it and that's what's going to scale you to the big big bucks if you want to have a six-figure business you could do one-on-one -on -one coaching. You just need to have it high ticket enough to be able to get to six figures. That's how I did my, got to six figures in my first year. I just did one-on-one -on -one coaching. And then that next year I started to add different services so that I could start to expand. In the upcoming years for me, I'm expanding through, I have a membership program that's low cost, but it doesn't take a lot of my personal input. And so I can scale it to whatever level and it could be filled with as many people. So it's the morning routine for entrepreneurs. People get to hang out with me once live per month, but then they get daily lessons. And so those daily lessons go out to however many people are in the group and it doesn't, it doesn't, for me, I can scale it to thousands of people. For my group coaching program, we'll cap it at 100 people because I want it to be boutique style group coaching where you have a lot of interaction with me. And you know, I love this program. The people in there are like my family. We really deep dive together. And so, you know, we're growing that to be 100 people max. And that is a million dollar program that'll create generate a million dollars of revenue. And then will add courses and live events. And so, you know, these are just examples of ways you can scale. So you must have systems in place to do this. If you don't have systems to nurture your people, they're gonna go away. If you don't have systems to make sure they're getting results, they're gonna go away. If you don't have systems to scale your business effectively, you're gonna burn out. So these are all really important key questions you must be asking yourself as you're designing a business from that reverse engineered blueprint of how you want your life to feel and look, <laughs> how you want your business to be created from your zone of genius and be built from a, a place of love and joy and fun and flow instead of obligation, expectation, burnout, and overworking. So I'm going to recap these questions. So four questions to help you clarify your client journey. Number one, who is your five-star customer? Number two, what problems do you help them solve? And in addition to that one would be what's the program or product that you've created to solve that problem? Number three, how do you attract them? And the, the subtext questions here are what systems do you have in place to attract and convert them into loyal paying customers? And then number four, what systems do you have in place to scale? And here you wanna be focusing on how are you nurturing your customers to grow impact and income with a scalable system. So you're future casting what you're gonna build based on how you can impact more people over time because you have systems in place to handle the influx of new people. Oh, I love this stuff. I could deep dive on this for a two-day workshop easily. <laughs> and in my group coaching program, we deep dive into all of this. I look at what you've created. I help you define it. I help you create a signature product that brings you the most money the fastest. Um, really, really great stuff we do in there. So if you are interested in working we, with me in the group coaching program, just go to innerpowerdaily.com backslash group coaching, innerpowerdaily.com backslash group coaching. You'll see a whole bunch of information there about the program, and then you can schedule a consult with me. I would love to work with you if that sounds like something you're interested in and you're really ready to take it to the six figure plus mark and you're driven in that direction, this is the group for you. I teach a lot of attraction strategies plus 
business growth strategies and systems to help you be successful while you're also breaking through your mindset BS (laughs) that's keeping you stuck. So check that out. And then I love it when people DM me. So DM me any questions that you have about today's episode or any reflections or comments that you have. So just at Inner Power Daily, just go to at Inner Power Daily on either Instagram or LinkedIn and send me your questions and let's hang out and chat. So that's it for today. I hope you have an incredible, wonderful week defining your client journey. And until next time, I'm sending you hugs and Inner Power High Fives. 